Have you ever wondered what it would be like to listen to your favourite music in surround sound? Have you ever considered stereo isn't the end game? Let me tell you a little bit about how music is mixed. First of all, life began in mono. No matter how many speakers you had, all the sounds came out of all of the speakers at the same time. Then somebody discovered that you could put a little bit of a delay and you could create an impression of different sounds coming from two speakers. So that's what happens in a studio. In a concert, there are loads of speakers. Don't think of it in terms of a 32 mix surround sound where, shall we say, the lead guitar comes in in the uh, mid space of the concert hall. That's not how it works. Everything is mixed live. There are no effects. What you're hearing in a concert, uh, that thing that we crave for, that I hear so many people talking about, the concert-like experience. Well, in actual fact, is really sort of more of a mono thing. So the bass guitar may have a bass guitar speaker in front of him but the bass guitar is being mixed into the whole of the sound that goes out to the concert hall much of which yes I agree is coming from two banks of speakers either side of the stage yes I will agree with that but it is not what you and I would call stereo in, a, in other words that the there would be a swirling effect of the drums and the vocals and they're putting delays on it. They haven't got time to do that. A live mix is basically a mono mix where everything is being spread equally across speakers. Wherever you are in the concert hall, you'll experience roughly the same sort of sound. The closest you'll get to surround in a concert hall setting would be to listen to a symphony orchestra. They are not amped. You will get a sound coming from the front, not from the back. These are acoustic instruments, so they will bounce off of the walls and such like. Um, you know, so a 52-piece concert orchestra would be a sort of a 52-piece surround sound system with much of the sound coming from the front and obviously that then bouncing around the concert hall. It's not amp and you'll be able to, your brain will be able to actually spatially be aware of where the sound is coming from and obviously your eyes will then uh, confirm that. And then we come to surround sound. Now don't tell me you don't like surround sound. I'm sorry and I've never heard of anybody that's been to the cinema and come out and said, but I wish that had been in stereo, it would have sounded far better. So we are used to surround sound. And that's not just classical music and film scores. Some film scores, of course, have such things as just normal rock and pop music. A lot of the musicals, Grease, Bohemian Rhapsody, is there. That was all in surround sound. I didn't hear anybody disappointed about the sound quality from listening to that in the cinema. My aim today is to try and convince some of you that there is some mileage to the surround sound in music. I have a few SACDs, Super Audio CDs. CDs and whether or not you agree that they are a better sound quality than CD, what SACDs have is two layers. One layer is a standard CD stereo layer and the second layer, i make sure I get my hands the right way around, is a 5-1 surround mix. Let's have a look and see whether you feel that you want to start listening to your music in surround sound. To demonstrate it, I'm going to use two tracks. The first track, surely one of the most spectacular introductions to a rock song that there's ever been on Money For Nothing. And you'll listen to that in stereo and you'll listen to it in surround. How can you listen to it in surround, you ask? Well, because I have one here. I'm going to put some in-ear microphones and I'm going to be facing the music. And if it's stereo, the sound will go into the mics and be recorded that way. And if the sound is coming from a 5-1 system, it will come in and it will recreate that sound as a recording. And all you have to do to listen to that sound is to put on a pair of earphones or headphones. And hey presto, you'll think that's surround sound. But a binaural mic will just simply pick up the sounds it's hearing. Your brain will then think, ah, that's surround sound and your ears will start to pinpoint where the sounds are coming from. For those naysayers that say YouTube is not a means of being able to assess sound quality because it's a lossy system, 
There Will Be Lossless Links provided. The second track, Jeff Wayne's musical version of War of the Worlds, and that will be the first track, The Eve of the War. And the one thing that I'm going to be changing is I'm going to be getting rid of all science. So those of you who want a scientific experiment here, there's the back door, leave now. What we're doing is a real world experiment this time. Many of you will have a really cool hi-fi system with a set of stereo speakers. Also, you will have a 5-1 surround sound system, which probably doesn't incorporate those stereo speakers. I'm going to be using a PC, my Lampazator DAC, and a Nova Fidelity X35 streamer amp, and some Focal Core 725 stereo speakers. For the second, I'll be using the Focal 725s as the fronts, and there'll be a Focal chorus center speaker, castle speakers as the mids, and on the back some KEF floor standers. Not to forget the 200 watt subwoofer that will be incorporated. All of that will be hooked up to a Marantz NR1711 AV amp, which is considerably cheaper than the Nova Fidelity X35 amp. And when you put into the fact that the NR1711 is providing the DAC facilities as well. And the Lampazator DAC 4, when it was originally bought by my good friend Andy, was five and a half thousand. And the Nova Fidelity X35 streamer amp is £1,500. That's seven thousand pounds against the cost of the seven hundred and fifty pounds Marantz and R seventeen eleven. So the five one system, in a way, in terms of at least the cost, you would say should be producing an inferior sound quality, right? What it has up its sleeve, and have a listen and see how it sounds.
last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. No one could have dreamed we were being scrutinized as someone with a microscope studies creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Few men even considered the possibility of life on other planets. And yet, across the gulf of space, minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. <laughs> studies creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Few men even consider the possibility of life on other planets. And yet, across the gulf of space, minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. <laughs>
I'm back upstairs now. What did you think? Did you enjoy your surround sound experience? Did you prefer stereo? Did it not win you over? The stereo was the more expensive kit, but there were a lot more speakers involved in the surround sound experience. I hope you got that eerie feeling and if you were able to sit yourself next to some speakers, it might have been a truly eerie feeling like I had, as if the speakers were playing the sound and not your earphones. I'm hoping you've got a feel for what surround sound sounds like through my recordings, because I don't think I've ever done that before. And sound is like through my way of doing things, my way of testing and evaluating things, because I don't think I've done that on YouTube before. So I hope you found that quite fascinating. This was a stereo versus surround test. Obviously, it's not definitive, and there are many reasons why it could never be definitive. The main one being there are a handful or a couple of hundred surround sound mixes of your favourite albums out there. Mostly they are classical and those that are rock and pop are long since um, out of print and so therefore they fetch a lot of money on the second hand market. You are never going to replace your whole back catalogue with surround sound so do not worry this is just something extra. But what I would say to you is I'm going to jump off the fence again. I love surround sound. I think it belongs in your home as well as in a cinema. I think there is a place for it and there is obviously and logically a place for stereo too. Whatever you're listening to, indulge yourself as much as you can and enjoy. Life is too short. Until the next time, ta -ra.